Welcome in everyone. I'm really excited to share my project, Pharmacist AI, with you all. So think of Pharmacist AI as your advanced pharma research assistant. Uh, one of the things Pharmacist AI solves not only help pharma students speed up their research, research work, but also retrieves the information which is reliable and precise. So let's take a closer look. Uh, meet Samantha. Uh, she is a pharmacist at a busy hospital. In her daily work, she needs to find important information on different medicines very quickly. Pharmacists like Samantha struggle to find critical drug information. So for, let's, say, let's say, for instance, Samantha wants to find the chemical composition of a drug. It's effective its effects on the different demographics like pregnant women or children and its contraindications. It generally involves looking up several sources, resource A, resource B, resource C. It can take Samantha several hours and it's a very tiring process. As you can see Samantha on screen, it is very stressful for her. Samantha is not alone. All her colleagues, pharmacists, students face a similar problem in their daily work and studies. So there has to be a better way to solve this problem by retrieving the relevant drug information quickly and efficiently. That is where Pharmacist AI comes in. Introducing Pharmacist AI, it's basically a rag on every drug label data set, which leverages the drug information quickly and efficiently and also goal of uh, pharmacist AI is to basically learn about medicines, drugs, straightforward and efficiently. So some of the key features of pharmacist AI is basically access to comprehensive data set, basically bringing the FDA drug label data set in your fingertips, retrieves relevant information in a dynamic setting, AI driven summaries, basically leverages LM to LLMs to generate insightful summaries and contextual answers. Interactive learning, we use LLMs to generate related questions to enhance your understanding on the concept and knowledge retention. And research linkage, basically it automatically fetches the links, relevant re research paper links for a user query to basically assist academic research and also cites relevant sources. So yeah, so as you can see, Samantha is all smiles now with Pharmacist AI. Moving on. So let's look at what went behind the scenes of implementing this. So one of the things I do first was building the FD drug data indexer. So I start with the FD drug data label set I pick up some text fields which can which I can query to get the medication information. These are my raw documents. I use the recursive text splitter to split it into chunk documents, and which is of each each chunk is of size thousand and with an overlap of hundred. Then these chunk documents goes to this embedding model, which is text embedding three small with open AI. And basically what we're doing is converting each chunk to a list of numbers or vector, which gets finally stored in this foreign vector base. So all of this is wrapped up in a fast API. You can just hit the endpoint with the URL of the data set and we'll just index this into the quadrant cloud database. So that's the one of the parts of my application. Now the RAG architecture. So Samantha goes to this chain web app, which is hosted on Hugging Face Spaces. She asks this question, what are the contraindications of aspirin? Then we convert, then it goes to this embedding model, text embedding three small by open AI. We convert that query into a list of numbers, vectors. Then it goes to the quadrant vector store, which is a knowledge base we just built. And moving on, that query also goes to the user query in our prompt template, which looks like this. Now, if you look at this, right? We have sent a query asked by Samantha, converted into vector in the embedding space in this quadrant vector store. And this is basically what we are doing right now is uh, 
wrapping up this vector vector store in a retriever. So what it does is like the query Samantha asked, it finds the similar vectors in this our knowledge base and give it and pass it on to the context as reference material for the relevant documents retrieved. So we pass on these four documents as reference material to the context. And now these con reference material is passed into the context window, which becomes our in-context learning. So we have done dense vector retrieval. We have done in-context learning. So two main parts of RAG, which is retrieval, augmentation. Retrieval was basically finding the relevant documents from your knowledge base. Now adding these references into the context in our prompt, which is our second part, augmentation. The only thing part which is left is generation. So now we pass on this to the chart model OpenAI GB 3.5 Turbo. And then we it goes to Langsmith. We record all the traces. We do custom eval using LLM, which is GPD-4 with Langsmith. And finally, we get a response on Chainlit web app hosted on Hugging Face Spaces. So that's overall the entire architecture of my RAG application. Now comes monitoring and evaluation. So we have deployed continuous framework for monitoring and evaluation for the answers generated by LLM. And we are using LLM as a judge. And all of, the, all of this is happening in real time. So as soon as I answer a query on this pharmacist AI, I get it evaluated using these custom evaluators. So one of that is pharmacist score, which evaluates relevance, informativeness, clarity, and use of sources. Now there is harmfulness score, AI detection score, where the response seems AI generated. And these are sent to Langsmith via feedback callbacks whenever a trace completes. It allows monitoring quality of responses without blocking execution. And all of these scores can be viewed in Langsmith UI to identify issues and guide improvements. So let's see pharmacist AI in action. So as soon as you go to this hugging face space, it will load the app and it relates out all the potential questions you can ask. Maybe you're not from the pharmaceutical industry. I've given a list of questions you can ask. So let's start by asking what are the contraindications of aspirin? The chain is running. This is the AI generated summary from for this question. Syndrome of asthma, rhinitis, nasal polypus. It cites all the relevant sources. You can look at all the sources and generates related questions from these sources, which were fetched for this query and the relevant papers from PubMed. And you can also ask questions from the here, from the chat. So let's ask what are some side effects of taking aspirin. And as we are doing this in real time, we are getting our traces here and it is getting evaluated. So let's look at the response for what are some side effects of aspirin. It's given some response, related questions, related papers from PubMed. Quick walkthrough of Langsmith. So I've asked what are some side effects of aspirin. It generated some answer. I can look at the feedback. Remember those scores, pharmacist score, harmfulness, AI detection. It has given this question, pharmacist AI score of 0.75. And you can also look at the reasoning by clicking on this, why it gave this score. So there is proper reasoning for there. And also you can monitor your project. So for my project as pharmacist, it basically you can look at the aggregated feedback for your application. So feedback for last seven days, run count of traces, error rate, total tokens, and information about most recent run and latency metrics. So that's overall the demo. Going back to my presentation. So let's talk about the data set we use here. So I'm using an open source FDA drug labeling data set, which is available to download. It consists 12 JSON files. And for this demo, I've only indexed one of the 12 files, which is 650 MB in Quadrant Cloud. 
So let's look at the some text we got about fields. 30 seconds left. So these are some text fields. I have indexed. These are some meta fields you can search on, filter, and this is how my quadrant cloud looks like. And future scope, basically indexing all the data, generating flashcards, study guides for students, and using advanced embedding models for better precision efficiency. So an acknowledgement here. Thank you for your time.